welcome to the hold back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. He said shut up. Oh, 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 oh. Um, hello everybody, my name is Professor Saborna Barry from Barry Science Lab. I was dancing in my private room, now I'm here? Oh, God damn. Anyway, today we will be looking at calculus, feet trigonometry. By the way, this is not a music video. That's not why there's a feet trigonometry over here. We tried to turn this into a music video in the beginning. Didn't exactly work out. Alright. So now, by clicking on this video, you are obliged to start with me, and I am obliged to teach you. You normies out there, sorry to the insults. Alright, now let us honor Sir Isaac Newton for creating the beautiful subject of calculus. Alright, now get the hell out. Next! By the way, next doesn't mean on this. Next! <laughs> Did I just say next? Sorry, folks. Next means. More calculus, more trigonometry, uh, more trigonometry, and more Newton. If you have a problem with that, get out of the class. Get the problem with Newton. That's fine. All right. So today we will be looking at calculus, feet trigonometry. So this is really a trigonometry lesson. This is actually co-requisite because you need this to understand the actual calculus that's coming along. Basically, people have been watching triangles and taking notes for a long time. Right? Well, that's how history goes according to my math textbook. Anyway, this is what the study of trigonometry is. Trigonometry is the study of triangles. So now, we're going to be looking at the three basic functions along with three other mystery functions along. All right, so first, let's get to the basics. For all you normies out there, which is probably like 10% of my viewer. Anyway, let's look at the three basic functions. Those cosine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. Now, we'll review them in order of appearance. So first up is sine theta. Let's draw our neat triangle. It's a right triangle, by the way. Don't get it wrong, get it right. This is a right triangle with a right angle, not a wrong angle, a right angle. Right, right, right. All right, it's all right. So give out a common phrase that's used to remember these equations. So, ka, to, a. Uh. So, ka, to, a. Uh. So stands for sine, which is opposite of the hypotenuse. What does that mean, you may ask? Well, it means the angle opposite to theta right over here and the longest side. So, this side we'll call A, which is a very original, very creative name. Now let's come up with an even more original name. Hmm, B, so original. Now let's come up with an even more original, creative, crafty, ultimate name. sound very appealing. But stick with me here, all right? You'll have fun living as a line eventually. So, let's 
would say you're just living your lying life. Which probably some of you already have. Eating french fries in your bed and all. And now, this is your umbrella to keep from the deadly, deadly sun. And now this is your entire body, your entire triangle. Now we have a wrong angle, not a right, okay, it's actually a right angle. But don't get it wrong, get it right, get it right angle. So this would be our theta in this class. And this would be A, B, C. Don't count with me. Anyway, this, well, A is really just the height of the triangle. B is really just the length of the triangle. And C, C is not C in a different language. Well, maybe it is, and I'm just dumb. Is the radius of our circle, which is, well, one in this case, is one. Because this is a unit circle. It's not just called a circle, first of all, to not sound creepy, and second of all, to, well, signify that this R is one. I can see the cameraman trying to be smug. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> Lecture Rodriguez, you can't fool me anymore. It would be equal to one over C is R. So effectively, in a unit circle, this would just be y. But for other things, well, this uh, hypotenuse is too great to be, well, just y. I can see the camera being being smug again. Mr. Alex Rodriguez, you can't escape me. Haha, <laughs> don't bring your phone out in class, chump. All right, so cosine theta, what is cosine theta, you may ask? Well, ka! what cosine theta is. Ka! End of lesson! Sorry folks. Wait, wait. End of lesson. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time. I'm just kidding. That was really the end of the lecture. Well then you folks who are smart enough to look at the time bar would know that it's really not the end. Haha. <laughs> so, the thing times have I said that? I think that was the third time. And, okay, that's the fourth time I've said the thing is. And so cosine theta is going to be x over r. So that means it's actually adjacent over hypotenuse. Buddies. Huh? So buddies over each other. B over C equal to, well, let's look at this for reference, x over r, which is also effectively just x in the terms of the unit triangle, but once you get r is way too great to be anything else, smuggo! Alex Rodriguez always gets smug whenever he hears something. What is opposite and what is adjacent? That means one far away guy and one buddy, right? All right, so, well, the far away guy in this case is A, and the close guy, the buddy, is B. See? B for buddy. Wow. What happiness. Now I can see Mr. Alex Rodriguez trying to hide his smugness again. God damn, he's always so smug. So that's just going to be Y over X. I hear him just trying to be smug around me. The thing is, tangent is equal to sine or cosine. Why is that, you may ask? Well, let's do some math. That's just going to be y over r over x over r, which is a mouthful, but stick with me. So we do the yo yo oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the a over the over c over the u. That was very embarrassing. The Oya rule, and that gets us to y over x, which is also known as tangent data. Wanted, dead or alive, tangent data, also known as the wind witch, y over x, tumbleweed, the rusted thistle. Anyway, for a second. So, C 
Zombie's inverse is cold chicken. Sorry, it's not cold chicken. I know you guys want to eat that. It's cold chicken. Cold chicken. Why do I keep saying that? So that actually just the inverse of Sean. I mean, what else would it be? Well, well it's just R over Y as of now. Cosine, meanwhile, it's just secant, which is weird. What did you think that sine's inverse would be secant and cosine's inverse would be cosecant? It's all just too confusing. So secant is R over X. Probably the people who invented trigonometry and were studying triangles were just trying to trick us. They were so tricky. Always tried to trick us. And you, smug Alex. All right. Don't try to smart Alex me, Mr. Alex Rodriguez. And now, what about tangent inverse? You said there was one last mystery function, Professor Tabuno. Well... That would be caught. What do I mean caught? By caught, I mean coating, which is x over y, meaning that again, cosecant over secant, it's cotangent. Well, that always happens, doesn't it? Doesn't it now? So now, those are the six main functions, well, the three main functions and the three mystery functions. We'll talk about, tomorrow we'll talk about another type of function. But today we won't be saying anything about that. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time.